Hey everybody, how are you doing? I hope your revision is going smoothly. Welcome back. Today we're going to be discussing research methods and I'm going to be walking you through a designer study question. I'm going to focus on an example of a uh, design and observation study. Now there are other ones like design a self-report study or design an experiment, but they're all so different depending on what bullet points they put in the exam that I, I just physically can't do all the different variations, okay? I'm sorry, but I'll be looking at an observation example today. All right, let's do it. So here's the example, okay? So we've got feedback from a school and they're saying that screen time is not good for social interactions. Well, to be fair, actually it just says affected. It doesn't say whether it's good or bad, but I assume bad. And a psychologist has decided to investigate this by doing some kind of observation during a playtime, okay, of how the kids interact. And that's where we come in, okay? So the task for us is to design an observation that is gonna investigate people's social interaction. Okay, and the bullet points we've been given, type of observation with justification, time sampling or event sampling, so how we're gonna actually you know, record the data with justification, dealing with one relevant ethical issue, yeah, one in bold, you're not gonna get credit for talking about more than one in this case, and how we're gonna assess reliability, and it actually tells us inter-observer reliability, so we're gonna, gonna uh, kind of have to explain how that works, like what it is, how we would do it, um, and, and, you know, the process we'd go through and what we're looking for, okay? So let's uh, break this down, okay? This would be a 12 marker, by the way. Um, you're going to have, basically, think about it as kind of three marks for each bullet point. It's not really marked like that. It's kind of marked in a more leveled way. Um, but general kind of tips before we start. Make sure you're kind of operationalizing stuff. Make sure you're really clear. You're giving, you know, more than one example of things. Make sure you're actually doing the justification. Otherwise, you're going to lose so many marks there because you won't get into the top level. Um... Make sure it's all actual, you know, practical stuff in terms of what you would do so someone could actually replicate it, okay? Um, so this one's a 12 marker. The other kind of designer study questions you'll see, it might just be a nine marker, in which case it'll just be three bullet points. So nothing to worry about, just actually less marks for that one. All right, let's do it. Okay, so let's break it down and look at the first bullet point, yeah? Type of observation. What does that mean? Do you know how many there are that you're supposed to know? There are six named on the spec. You've got covert, overt, participant, non-participant, controlled, naturalistic. So what I would do here is pick a couple of those, and like from each pair, I mean, and explain why you would use them in this context. Okay, that's what the justification is. So are you going to do it overt or covert? You might want to do this overt, and that's fine. And maybe you're going to make comments like, you know, for safeguarding, for, you know, because we're observing children. Uh, you'd want them to be aware of what was going on, maybe ethics, and go down that route. That's fine. You can do that. You might say, actually, that you want to do this covert. Yeah, If you're looking at how children play, if you're looking at maybe, you know, if there's going to be fighting or anything like that, if they know that you're there to watch that, they might be more likely to kind of either act up or act down, I suppose, as it were. Yeah. So you might go down that route and say, that's why I would do it covertly. That's fine, as long as you justify it. Okay, so a next, uh, another pair might be uh, thinking about, am I going to do it controlled or naturalistic? It doesn't really make sense in this context to do it controlled, because you, know, you specifically want to observe their behavior in the playground. So you wouldn't really kind of set up a special uh, station in the playground and say, right, everybody out of lessons, come here for exactly 10 minutes and you're going to do this and, you, you know, you're going to put, I don't know, sheets up so no one can see anything else that's going out on outside to reduce extra... Yeah, you're not, going to, you're not going to do that, are you? Okay. So I would say naturalistic is probably the correct answer here. Participant or non-participant? I mean, if you're going to get involved and kind of do activities with the children, you could do that sort of thing. But remember that here we're actually looking at how children interact with each other and it's suggesting to me anyway that what you're looking at is maybe like pro-social behavior or even anti-social in terms of like, are they fighting or are they playing nicely? It's not really about how they interact with you, is it? So I'd probably say it needs to be a non-participant observation, okay? So how might that look? I'd write it up like this. And what I'm doing throughout here is I'm referring back to the context and I'm explaining why I'm doing or why I've made the decisions that I have, okay? And I'm trying to give where possible, I'm trying to give some actual practical details of how this would work on the ground, yeah? So I'm saying... You know, I would do this at the children's school during a break time. I would say that, you know, I'm going to have researchers, I'm going to do it covert, and I'm going to have researchers maybe sitting on a bench kind of out the way, yeah? Maybe so they've got a good view, but they're not in the, right in the middle of the playground, yeah? Okay, I'm not going to read all that out. You can pause it if you want to read it a bit more. Let's look at the next bullet point. So here we need to talk about either time or event sampling, and again, justifying. 
So these, remember, are about how you actually collect your data or when you collect your data. So this is where you've got your tally table with your categories, your behaviors to look for, yeah? Time sampling, always people always muddle these up, yeah? But time sampling is where you are going to set certain intervals and only record data at those intervals. So for example, you might sit there and say, well, every 30 seconds, I'm just going to mark in the tally chart what's happening, yeah? And between those 30 second intervals, I'm going to ignore what's going on. You can do that, and sometimes that's useful if you've got, you know, a lot of behaviors or it's going to be very busy or, uh, you know, stressful or difficult to maintain over a long period. Or you might say, actually, I'm going to do it every single time the behavior happens, which is event sampling. And perhaps you would do that so that you don't miss out lots of important information or behaviors in between those intervals. But I think either would be okay here. So I've gone with event. What I'm doing here is I'm giving specific examples of behavioral categories. Yeah, the stuff that's going to go in my tally table. Yeah, make sure it's operationalized or at least kind of clear and objective. So, you know, talking to another child. Well, hopefully there isn't any debate about, you know, they've actually spoken to another person. Yeah, pushing. Again, that is any kind of physical contact, I suppose. Maybe I could actually improve that by saying physical contact with another child. But, you know, hugging, there isn't hopefully too much debate about what that means. Um, you know, I can't, for example, just have a category like being kind or... Um, probably just even something like just playing. It needs to be a bit more specific than that, yeah? Okay, I'm explaining how that's going to work, so every time it happens, and I've justified it by saying that, you know, we're not missing out on lots of behaviours. Right, this time we have one relevant ethical issue. Okay, so remember here it says one, so don't bother with other ones. It's just not going to get you any marks, okay? So what kind of things might be relevant? if we're doing a covert observation of children's behavior. Well, I think the first thing that comes to mind for me is about consent, right? Because it's a covert observation, particularly where children are involved. So what could we do about that? Well, this is possibly how I'd approach this, okay? So I'd do a separate paragraph now on this one, and I'd be talking about um, the fact that consent is relevant because it's covert, as I said. But to deal with it, because that's the focus on this bullet point, let's not just explain an issue, it's how you're going to deal with it. So practically, what am I going to do? Yeah, use a bit of common sense. What, what would you do? Maybe I'm going to approach the head teacher and ask, uh, you know, are you okay with it? And this is what I'm going to do. And this is how I'm going to store the data. And this is what I'm hoping to get out of it. Um, and get their consent. Yeah, because if they say it's all right, you know, it's their school, they are, you know, responsible for the safeguarding of the children in their care. So if they consent, that should be okay. What you could also do is just send out an information letter or some kind of notification to parents saying that, you know, there are going to be people around the site to collect data for a research study um, and give them the opportunity to ask questions, I suppose. Yeah. So I think that's fine. That's that's dealing with that. OK. All right. So the uh, next point is assessing reliability through inter-observer reliability, okay? And they've been kind enough to tell us that we need to talk about inter-observer reliability, yeah? If they didn't, and they just said how you'd assess the reliability, obviously that's something you could then probably get a mark for actually explaining, but they've given that to us. So we just need to talk about how that's gonna work. So key points when you're talking about how inter-observer or inter-rater reliability is gonna work. So the point is you're gonna have more than one observer, yeah? Practically, what's going to happen? Again, remember that what you need to do is give the examiner enough information to convince them that somebody could actually carry this out in the real world. Yeah. So two researchers could be stationed covertly on benches in the playground with a view of the whole area. Yeah? I talked about in the design earlier, I talked about how I was going to get them kind of, you know, sat near the playground or at the edge of the playground. So I just need to add in the fact that it's going to be two. What would happen next? Well, once they've done the observation, once they've collected their data through event sampling or whatever you chose, they need to compare their own kind of separate observations. And then you're going to statistically test the relationship or the correlation between them. Okay, so for uh, establishing or for checking into observer reliability, it's done with a correlation. Yeah, you're going to basically see if there's a strong positive correlation between the two people, because there should be. Yeah, there should be. If there's not, then possibly they've missed certain bits of information or it was too subjective. So you kind of need to go back to the drawing board on your behavioral categories possibly, okay? But anyway, that's that's how it would work, yeah? So you're gonna test the correlation and you probably don't have to include this last bit, but I think it's good practice to, uh, to be aware of. When you are looking for a correlation for reliability, you're looking for at least 0.7, kind of 0.8, that kind of range, okay, as your, um, as your coefficient, okay? To indicate that there's enough, you know, agreement between the two observers. All right, and that's it. 
there you have it. That was me talking about how I would deal with a design and observation question. Okay. Key point, again, I said earlier, I'm sure, um, make sure you just stick to the bullet points and you make it practical. Yeah. All right. Hope that was useful for you. Let me know down in the comments how you're getting on, if you've got any questions, and I'll try and get back to you. Keep going. You got this. Bish bash bosh.